hinges um, these are actually decent hinges and I save those for the theater we use those I use those in building sets all the time and it's just a way to save money and recycle them so those are going to go to the school this is how the opening has opened up not horrible you can see here where there's been some water that came in from up top but uh, that's not unexpected this is sheetrock that's not mold they had some crappy spray foam insulation. I'm not a big fan. I think I've talked about it before. I'm not a big fan of spray foam insulation. That's what they put there. It just seems, I don't know, it's stupid. I'd rather frame my windows and doors in tight and use regular fiberglass insulation uh, to shove it in there, but whatever. And surprisingly enough, you remember the two vertical legs, the bottom of the two vertical legs was paper. And you look in here, and that's mold right there. I'm gonna blast that with uh, some copper green. What is that? Oh, that's some kind of floor glue. Uh, but this is in decent shape. It's really not in bad shape. And neither is this one. It's just dirty. Um, yeah. But I need to take some measurements right now, and I need to figure out how off these windows are and I think I need to make up, I think they're almost three and a half inches narrow, if I'm not mistaken. Three, three and a half inches narrow. Those are 72, and I believe, I think these are like 74 and a half or pretty close to 75 wide. I got to get my, my tip measure. It's in the garage. Oh, yeah, and uh, homeboy's not here yet to help me lift those windows. Oh, I'll be there first thing. I'm like, dude, first thing for me is like 7.30, 8 o'clock. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. That's why I work alone. You guys wonder why I work alone? It's 9.39 right now, December 1st, 2015, and uh, no call, no nothing. I can't really scold him. He's not my guy. He's not my guy, so whatever. I'm just happier working by myself because I know when I'm going to get here. So anyhow, let's take some measurements. Let's go to the lumber yard, and uh, we'll see you when I get back. All right, we're just getting here. Let's see what I got done yesterday. It got dark again. <clears throat> it gets dark by four o'clock and I can't film anything. I put some light bulbs in. Uh, this is cedar, western red cedar. It's two by eight. This stuff's over 10 bucks a linear foot. So you've got to make sure all your counts, all your counts, all your cuts count. And that's uh, unprimed. Yeah. It's $9.86 a linear foot plus sales tax. Sales tax up here is close to 9%. So you do the math. It's over 10 bucks a foot. Yeah. And that's unprimed. Like I said, the, uh, they wanted an extra two twenty-five a linear foot for priming. And uh, I saw there was a gallon of primer here. I just flipped it on the old boards and got my weenie roller out and rolled it with some nice oil base. Turn the heater on here last night before I left, and uh, good is good. So here's where we have the first, let me set down. My drink of choice this morning is orange juice. I loved orange juice. Picked a weird week to stop drinking coffee. I did not put the locks in yesterday. Well, that's how she fit. I didn't get much video yesterday because I was hustling. Everything about these windows are heavy. <laughs> Let it fit. Made a mess. It's cold outside. It fits like a champ. I'll put the lock hardware in today, maybe, sometime. We'll see. And then we'll figure out the interior trim. I'm not worried about interior work. I think we're going to be battling. Let's go upstairs. Let me grab my orange juice and um, I think we're going to be battling rain this week today's what Wednesday December 2nd got the three doors up here 
I think I'm going to concentrate on getting the exterior stuff done. I see there's water on the glass there. I might even have... Ah, I could work in the rain. There's pretty good eave on this one. I could change this door if it's raining. As long as it's not windy, I can change this. I could do this. I could do this! The trench worked perfectly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna get to work, man. I got stuff to do. I contain my own misses. So it's uh, what time is it? Ten fifteen, December. Oops, it's the truck. Ten fifteen. So I've been here a couple hours. I got the second door installed. Well, the first one for today. This is the lower unit, of course. I don't know that I showed you this the first time. Check out the gap. You always want to make sure your gap is even. Right? I mean, that's just common sense. And 90% of that is done when you're doing the framing, when you're ripping your pieces. You make sure you're level and plumb. And surprisingly enough, this threshold is level. Maybe I'll put the locks on today. Maybe not. I don't know. Let's go upstairs. Let's see what we got done. If I can get the other two installed today, oh buddy, that would be most excellent. That's how this one came out. I'm really not a fan of the stickers they use because they leave glue residue. So then you have to come back and clean everything thoroughly. So that one's got a pretty good gap. I can adjust the wheels. The wheel height is adjustable on these doors. It's this bottom gold screw. So if your door, that's how you do your final adjustment to get your door to look flush in your jams. But like I said, I'm 90, 95% there before even adjusting the doors. So these roll pretty good, not bad, Simonton. Uh, this is just over seven inches, so I got that stuff in two by eight. So I'm gonna rip an edge down and get them to fit a single piece. But the pieces that I pulled out of there that are two by sixes, uh, I'm gonna rip them down to do the piece along the bottom, save some money. Uh, there's nothing wrong with them, they're in good shape except for the very bottom ends of them were crusty, but I can cut those off. That's uh, only six foot that way and it's 80 inches that way. So we've got plenty to trim the ends off to make it clean, rip it on the, rip it on, on the table saw. Don't step. All right, let's demo this other door and let's get on getting on. Uh, the first good thing, look, there's no uh, slabs of Western red cedars sitting there. Which means only one thing, they've either been cut up for firewood or they are installed. Second good thing, heater's running. Whew. And I need it. I'm keeping it at 60. 60. I don't need it much hotter than that, I am moving around. So the rain lightened up a little bit. I've got all the exterior trim in place. As I say that, it's having a little bit of a downpour. That's awesome. It doesn't matter. I am soaked through the skin right now. Uh, hey, look. You know, I can't say enough. He, he, I am totally ADD today, but I can't say enough about um, having a good pair of boots because my boots are wet, but my feet are dry. I'm wet. Well, I won't show you down here because uh, the light's horrible down here, but it doesn't matter. I'm soaked, but my feet are dry. That's really all that matters. So I put the primed side and edges back. <coughs> Ooh, I just swallowed a fly. Holy cheese its What the hell is a bug flying around in this kind of weather? <coughs> Got a little protein out of that mother. Where was I? Oh, primed edge and sides are back towards the house. The exposed area, I still have to prime. I'm obviously not going to do that today. I'm not going to caulk today either. I wanted to get that exterior trim installed today. I didn't really care too much about the weather. It's not in direct rain and it's not windy. 
However, I still wanted the wood in place to hold all that flashing nice and tight against the house. So if it did get windy, uh, the wind wouldn't lift up anything. This Forta Flash has some pretty phenomenal adhesive properties in its, I'm assuming it, it feels like a neoprene, uh, that real flexy black rubber, um, but it sticks to itself and sticks to everything else amazingly strong. So I, I'm not 100% worried that rain or water or wind would drive that in there, but I don't want to take any chances. And this Western Red can get wet, but if anything, it keeps the water from directly getting into corners I don't particularly want it to get into without caulking. Um, what am I talking about with nailing patterns? Oh yeah, let's, let's not fall down this little cabin right here. And right now it doesn't matter. I'm out in the rain, but I'm so soaked. It just doesn't, it just doesn't matter. These little holes on the bottom are called weep holes. W-E-E-P. There are one-way valves that are supposed to go in here. I just haven't installed those yet. Doesn't really matter. It just keeps bugs, I guess, from getting in there. Two things about nailing when you're nailing off trim on the bottom of your doors. You don't want your nails underneath the weep holes. I've seen that happen before where somebody will nail in a piece of trim and it's within this little area here. The downside to that is there's always going to, there will always be water coming out of this weep hole and you don't really want it to get on your nail and deteriorate or corrode your nail or even the water ultimately will get back into the wall because you just knocked a hole into your membrane or your wood. Uh, and then Secondly, this has metal flashing. The metal flashing goes up to about here. And when you're putting nails in your bottom trim, you don't really want to poke holes in the metal flashing because metal flashing is non-healing. I can run a nail through that Forta Flash membrane and that stuff's self-healing, so they call, so they say. You drive a nail through it, for the most part, that neoprene is going to form a tight seal around the nail. You poke a hole down here with a nail and you poke a hole in the galvanized tin, uh, that stuff doesn't heal. It will create a leak eventually down the road. But, is this a wonderful sight? <laughs> Working the table saw. And it's awesome because you can't dust it off because you're wet. Anyhow, I'm going to go inside now. I've got interior trim to do. All the exterior trim is in place. It's not sealed. It'll be fine. It's better, like I said, even with raw wood on there because that raw wood will dry. It won't go anywhere. It's straight grain clear straight grain yeah buddy so uh, I'm gonna take my jacket off because my jacket is soaked and uh, just dry out as I work inside so I'll kick you along for the ride all the birds are out today playing uh, ADD again oh shiny birds shiny objects pretty birds whatever okay I'll be right back silly me why well, walk around in wet clothes? But I got all my clothes in there. And while that stuff's drying, a little bit of sawdust. <laughs> I, I, I already cleaned the filter once and it is just full of uh, sawdust. Not that it matters, it's just blowing out in the garage. Which is actually kind of nice because it warms the garage up quite nicely for any work I have to do out here. And being that, I got so much skin exposed right now. So we ain't turning the camera on. But what I did was I did clean up. I did a quick bag check. I don't like stepping over garbage. So I went upstairs and I collected all the bags, or uh, the bag, bagged up all the piles, swept everything down, swept everything down here. Uh, that's all I have left of that Western Red Cedar. I knew I'd have about a foot off of each. And then that last one, they were, uh, anyway, whatever. That's not bad, that's not horrible. Although that's about 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. That's probably 60 bucks worth of wood right here. One, two, three, four sticks. <laughs> that's no joke. That's a foot and a half. This stuff's $10.64 a foot, a linear foot. And that one is, uh, yeah, three feet. 30, 40, 50, 60. So with tax and everything and a few extra inches here or there, you're probably 70, 75 bucks worth of wood right there. That's going to be one spendy fire I'm going to have later. <sighs> yeah. Anyhow, we'll talk nail guns here in a minute. 
I'm going to show you what I use, what my tool of choice is for set and trim, but that will involve me setting the camera down somewhere and showing you because I need two hands to load that thing. And uh, again, I'm flying commando right now, so there's nothing here you need to see, folks. Move right along.